Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, Excellencies, the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by expressing my uh, appreciation to the German Federal Minister, uh, Minister of Finance and to the Union of Arab Banks for uh, convening us uh, all in this timely event. It's an absolute uh, pleasure to be virtually among you today. Well, let me start by saying that the world never stands still. We are all witnessing unprecedented times. Uh, nations, governments, banks, corporations, policymakers, all working to adapt while we're all sticking to our mandates and to our citizens and to the needs of our citizens in these changing times. The current economic crisis, as you all know, is the worst. Uh, crisis that uh, the entire world has experienced since the 1920s. The world had never witnessed such a similar crisis. We came out of the pandemic with the disruption in global supply chain and increase in prices to the geopolitical challenges. Uh, the losses of the current crisis uh, is uh, estimated to be an, around 12 trillion US dollars in uh, GDP. Uh, of course, the global uh, uh, domestic product is estimated to slow down. We're expecting to have uh, to reach around 5.6%. Uh, 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 we're estimated to uh, uh, go down to 36 and in recent uh, estimates to about 3.2%. Uh, uh, the economic impact of uh, this geopolitical tension is best captured by what the economists uh, call uh, a severe supply shock, which is a shock that pushes up inflation, uh, which is running now uh, above the targets and reduces growth. And simultaneously, it increases unemployment and also pushes more people into poverty. How much inflation rises and how much growth slows, this will ultimately uh, uh, hinge on our countries preparedness to respond and to rebuild together. Uh, the geopolitical unrest has underlined the deep strategic vulnerabilities in our trade relationship and we can only address this by being more united and by being more cooperative. Uh, uncertainty finds a way to bring together different people and perspectives from uh, to form more consensus through cooperation and the commitment to leave no one behind. And of course, uh, the multilateral efforts that respond to uh, humanitarian crisis prevent further economic fragmentation and maintain global liquidity and manage uh, the debt distress that the world is suffering from. We must also uh, address the prevailing financial challenges that impede in this investing more in our uh, uh, SDGs. And uh, the recent uh, estimates of uh, the UN to the uh, uh, developmental gap or the financing gap, because one of the more, the most uh, uh, hurdle to uh, countries achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030 is financing needs of developed and developing countries. And we had uh, challenges in reaching these uh, uh, sustainable development goals before the pandemic and before the geopolitical challenges. And the challenges now have uh, uh, um, exacerbated these, uh, this gap. And the estimate, the uh, UN estimate, uh, is about 7 trillion US dollar per year in order for developed countries to achieve the sustainable development goals and about 4.5 trillion uh, per year for developing countries. Let me share with you uh, 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 in Egypt what we are doing. Uh, in Egypt, uh, prior to the recent developments and the recent challenges, the government of Egypt have embarked upon uh, the first phase of economic reform program, which aimed basically to achieve macroeconomic stability, uh, uh, achieve uh, uh, financial stability, fiscal discipline, and uh, uh, monetary uh, uh, flexibility. And hence, this increased Egypt's competitiveness. Uh, also, uh, there was this was coupled uh, with legislative and institutional reforms that uh, helped us uh, achieve 
Egypt's more competitiveness. And building on uh, the successful uh, phase of uh, the reform, the successful uh, implementation of the first phase of the economic reform program, uh, which is all a part of Egypt's Vision 2030, we started uh, embarking on the second phase of the economic reform program, which is uh, uh, the structural reform program. But let me here emphasize that the first phase of the economic reform program with the fiscal and monetary uh, 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 reform that happened uh, at that time and the successful reform that happened, also Egypt uh, heavily embarked on uh, investing in its infrastructure, uh, uh, basically to uh, um, enhance the quality of life for our people, but also to make the country uh, more receptive to private sector, whether this private sector is local or international. So upgrading the level of our infrastructure was key in terms of energy, uh, uh, electricity, ports, and uh, road uh, uh, networks, and of course, public transportation. Uh, one of also the developments that we have worked on is uh, investing uh, uh, heavily in uh, our uh, rural areas in, uh, about Egypt in order to ensure safety and security uh, for our people and to provide better quality uh, of services to our people. And this is a presidential uh, initiative that was, that was launched uh, a, year, a year and a half ago, which is called Haya Karima or Decent Life uh, Initiative. This uh, national uh, mega project, I think it's the biggest developmental project worldwide, which aims to improve the life uh, of uh, uh, the quality of life of more than 50% of uh, uh, our Egyptian people uh, by uh, revamping infrastructure, improving access to basic services, education, healthcare, uh, uh, creating jobs. Uh, this is one of the biggest. Uh, uh, developmental projects worldwide, and it addresses the 17 uh, development uh, goals. Uh, this is targeting basically 4,500 villages, as I said, more than 50% of our Egyptian population, 58 million people, uh, and is basically, uh, we are uh, um, basically allocating around uh, 40 to 50 billion uh, US dollar for, uh, 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 will be uh, spent, invested in these places uh, for the next uh, three years. So uh, um, this, uh, the structural reform program with the investment and in, in the decent life uh, initiative helped uh, the economy become more resilient to shocks because the structural reform program is focused on the real side of the economy. We are increasing the weight of, uh, 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 of manufacturing, agriculture and ICT, which is the real side of the economy, making the economy more uh, competitive uh, and more export oriented. Uh, the pandemic, of course, had a silver lining that it accelerated digitalization. Uh, it helped us also uh, um, uh, focus on more resilient sectors such as health uh, and education and, uh, of course, green financing. So uh, uh, this uh, were also uh, one of the uh, issues that uh, the government is prioritizing, uh, the uh, real side of the economy, uh, and of course, uh, um, prioritizing social protection and human uh, development. Uh, with the, uh, of course, continues of challenges, uh, also uh, um, the government of Egypt had taken several measures uh, to uh, ensure food security and uh, social and financial uh, measures with taking preemptive uh, measures uh, early on uh, at the geopolitical uh, uh, when uh, we were hit by the geopolitical uh, uh, repercussions uh, maintaining fiscal discipline uh, and also uh, trying to increase uh, public investment uh, it is uh, a major uh, uh, challenge. Uh, we are trying to uh, maintain our fiscal discipline, yet we are trying to increase the public investment to invest in uh, our uh, uh, people and provide uh, good quality services to our people. So, um, uh, we also uh, uh, worked on recently on uh, enhancing the role of the private sector through uh, issuing uh, um, the uh, state ownership policy that enhances the role of the private sector and also uh, focuses more on green investment. We have increased our uh, green projects uh, from 30% uh, 
uh, to 40 percent this coming fiscal year, reaching 50 percent by uh, the next year, uh, by the year 24-25. And we are, of course, hosting uh, COP27. I welcome you all uh, in Egypt, in Sharm el Sheikh, in uh, next November. Uh, we are also uh, keen uh, to make uh, the country uh, more competitive and more, of course, uh, export oriented. Uh, mobilizing private sector engagement is key to our uh, development. Um, uh, that's why uh, we also, uh, the government of Egypt uh, has uh, established the Sovereign Wealth Fund, which worked on uh, several uh, projects. Uh, the Sovereign Wealth Fund is the first Sovereign Wealth Fund that Egypt has uh, established uh, two years ago, right before uh, the pandemic. And although the world has witnessed decreased uh, in investment, uh, the Sovereign Wealth Fund was successfully able to attract uh, a foreign direct investment and also uh, local investment in several projects and in infrastructure in uh, uh, utilities in desalination of water in green hydrogen uh, um, such projects uh, will uh, also uh, invest in egypt's priority sector that are uh, uh, building our country uh, more green and more sustainable uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, we stand at the convergence point between all stakeholders, public, private, local and regional partners, civil society and other uh, uh, organizations uh, to support uh, um, uh, share solutions, unlock bottlenecks and uh, implement strategies that advance our uh, sustainable development goals.